High Fidelity really came into existence in 1926 uh, because of the president's request of Bell Labs to design his PA system. So you had Nobel Prize winning physicist designing a speaker for the president with an unlimited budget. What they came up with on the left-hand board in here is the 555 compression driver. That driver cost more than an automobile at the time. Uh, it is still virtually state-of-the-art. Uh, two years after the PA system was made for the president, which would have this driver on a six-foot trumpet-shaped horn on a tripod, uh, sound came to the motion picture industries, 28, 29. And this driver fell in as the basic building block for movie theater sound. Uh, that means enough of them were made that if you really want one, eBay turns them for about five to $10,000. Uh, it was this driver that Paul used on the first clipch horn during World War II. Uh, he used that uh, pretty much exclusively as his high end for his woofer cabinet. A few years later, Bell Labs designed a tweeter for movie theater use, and that's on the right-hand board. That is the Bostwick 597 tweeter. You're probably aware of the little yellow button that says bullshit. Uh, that was Paul's answer to the many snake oil salesmen in our industry, then and now actually. In spite of snake oil salesmen in the industry, there were companies that he did respect. We have many of them represented here. We've got Electrovoice, JBL, Altec Lansing, Jensen, Stevens, and even Voigt from England. 